So um, how many of you have done Punnett squares before? They're the little things that look like the tic-tac-toe charts. Okay, only two. Okay, so maybe half of the class. All right. You are going to want to write down the examples that we do. You can write those examples onto page 21. But I need to see pencils moving so that I know you're writing down my examples. All right, so we're going to look at probability and Punnett squares and how Punnett squares help us to determine the probability of a genetic cross. First of all, what is probability? The, the likelihood that something will happen. Is it going to tell you absolutely what will happen? No. no. So it is the likelihood that something's going to happen. What will probably happen? And probabilities can be used to predict the outcomes of crosses in genetics. And these, we're going to start with the simplest one, which is called a one-trait cross. So we're only going to be looking at one trait. So your notebooks need to be open to page 22. So for a good video on how to set up Punnett squares, there is this Bozeman Science tutorial. There's the video link for it. Um, we're going to look at how can we use <coughs> genetics, uh, Punnett squares, to predict outcomes and how do geneticists use them. Okay? So a Punnett square. Mendel did not use a Punnett square. Punnett squares weren't developed until a French mathematician, last name, guess what? Punnett, came up with this model to show how you can predict a genetic cross. Okay? So this is why we call it a Punnett square. Otherwise, it, if Mendel had come up with it, it would be called a Mendelian square. The conventions that we're going to follow is that we have capital letters being used for dominant traits and lowercase letters being used for recessive traits. Okay, so now I'm going to start writing and we're going to do some sample Punnett squares. Okay, so first of all, we're going to, so we're going to start out with the trait that we've looked at the most. So we're going to do all of our writing under the left-hand side, okay? The left-hand page. Not on our notes necessarily because you might not have room, so we want to use the left-hand page, so it's going to be page 21, okay? Page 21. So if I tell you that a plant is... Pure breeding, if I say it's purebred tall, what letters would we use? And I say letters because there's two of them. So if we say that it's purebred tall, what letters would we use to represent the genes inside the cells of that organism? Yeah. <coughs> big T, big T. Why do we use two letters? Why do we use two letters? Tell me. For, to explain the two T's? Like the two capitals? Why do we use two? Well, you said it's purebred tall. So, like, it's not, like, like it could have been tall or short. Like it's okay, but why specifically do we have two letters there? Yes, ma'am? You're right. Chromosomes come in pairs. That's why there's two. Okay. What if I say it's hybrid tall? And then what two letters do I have? Yes, sir? Capital T, lowercase t. Capital T, lowercase t. Because remember, a hybrid is, it had one parent that was purebred tall, one parent that was purebred short. This is that F1 generation that Mendel got. What if I say it's short? Little t, little t. Do we understand that? Deja, are you writing? Deja. Wrong, wrong file. Ah! Sometimes I get the wrong names. I pull the wrong file out of the brain, you know. 
You guys, I, I see people dozing. Your eyelids get heavier and like they're lead. And I, I watch the slow shutting down. And then I call you by the wrong name to try to get you to pay attention. And that's effective, isn't it? No. It's effective? No? Makes me more sleepy. Makes you more sleepy? Okay, Frank. <laughs> What you laughing at, Mildred? Okay. When I look at these letters here, you were introduced to some new words in that video. Genotype and phenotype. When we use the letters here, is this our genotype or our phenotype? Our genotype. Why do you say that? Because we can't see that. Because we can't see that. Exactly. So the letters are our genotype. So big T, big T, or big T, little t. The genotype is what's inside the cells, and we can't see this. But if I tell you the plant is tall or the plant is short, that's the phenotype. This is what you see. Okay. <coughs> All right, so you need to know genotype and phenotype, purebred and hybrid. So I would like to look at what's going to happen if I cross two parents that are both hybrids for tall. Okay, hybrid tall. We have to go step by step. Because there are people who have not done a Punnett square before, so I want you to have a sample. All right, so we're going to cross two hybrid talls. So here's how you do a really simple Punnett square. It looks like tic-tac-toe. You should write this, yes. You want to have the samples, right? Okay. So I want to cross a hybrid tall parent with another hybrid tall parent. So what did I just write? Their phenotype, right? Their phenotype that they're going to be tall. Genotype up here on it there. I'll put the other genotype there. I'll pause for a second, let you get caught up. All right. So next thing here is we want to figure out what kind of gametes can be made from this parent. This parent can make gametes that carry the dominant trait or gametes that carry the recessive trait. Remember law of segregation, the pairs of gametes have to separate from each other. This parent over here, what kind of gametes can it make? Same thing. Okay, it can make dominant gametes or recessive gametes. What do the boxes inside of here represent? Yep. Yeah what, would, yeah, what would we call, though? If this right here are gametes, and these right here are gametes, what is inside of the highlighted box? Yeah. Okay, cells, oh, it's the offspring, yeah. And the offspring are made from fertilization. 
So now you have to bring together if this egg is fertilized by this sperm, that's the result in the offspring. What would go in this box right here? What would go in that box? Okay, big T, little t. And we always keep our capital letter first. How about bottom left? Big T, little t. And then bottom right? Little t, little t. That's that three to one thing. Okay, so this is that three to one thing. If you're reporting your phenotype ratio, it's three to one. Three tall to one short. Okay, that's your phenotype ratio. But we know our genotype ratio is going to be one homozygous dominant, one, I'm sorry, two heterozygous, and one homozygous recessive. That's the genotype? And this is your genotype ratio. Okay. You can also use fractions or percentages. You could say three fourths or seventy five percent tall and one fourth or twenty five percent short. So there's other ways to report it. <clears throat> I'm going to, I know the bell's about to ring for you guys. I'm going to pause this and then come back and I'll work out another problem and finish narrating the lecture so that you guys can look at it tonight. Okay, so that was our first example. Another example I'll give you of a would be if I had a um, hybrid tall cross with a short pea plant. So we set up our Punnett square. Here's our first parent. Here's our second parent. You separate out the gametes that the parent can produce, and then you put them back together here, representing the offspring that could be created. Okay, so the end result here is going to be, you would say two to two, which you would reduce to be one, one to one ratio, one big T, little t, to one little t, little t, or 50% Big T, little t, 50%, little t, little t. What is this? If you said genotype ratio, that's good. And your phenotype ratio is 50% or a one-to-one -one tall and um, short. So that's your second example. Okay. So as we finish this lecture here, we're going to continue with this using uppercase letters for dominant traits and lowercase letter for recessive traits. And this just, the PowerPoint just takes you through um, doing a Punnett square. You need to pay attention to those vocabulary terms, homozygous and heterozygous. Homozygous organisms are always going to give you offspring or make gametes that look exactly the same as the parent. But heterozygous is going to show the dominant trait, but it still carries the short hidden trait. Um, phenotype and genotype, important vocabulary terms. Phenotype are the physical traits that you can see, and your genotype is your genetic makeup. You don't see the genotype. And there's one more here. Remember, probabilities are predictions for average income uh, outcomes. They are not going to tell you exactly what's going to happen. It's just your prediction of what can happen. So the larger the number of offspring that you have, the closer you're going to get to the 50-50 or the 75-25 ratio. 
Um, you don't always see this happen exactly falling ex like the ratios with your offspring until you have a large enough number of offspring. Okay, so this is a really short lecture, and don't forget to go back and watch that Bozeman Science video for how to set up good Punnett squares.